Thank you. Uh, Representative Graves, you're recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Madam Chair, I, I want to respond to some comments that were made earlier. Um, first of all, uh, comments were made that, that President Trump asked Saudi Arabia to, to cut oil production. Um, I read the same reports, and that was in April of 2020, and I want to I wanna make note that oil prices at the time uh, were actually in the negative range. They were in the negative range. Um, you know, so if we're going to sit here and we're going to talk about oil prices, let's let's do that. Um, except for maybe I won't do it. Um, yeah. <laughs> Can you come hold these for me, Huffman? Uh, so so uh, so 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 look at what's happened with gas prices. Uh, this is during the Biden administration. Um, so so we were talking about prices. Uh, my, my friend was talking about prices when they were negative. Literally, the oil futures were negative. And so, yes, he did go to the cartel and ask them to cut production so we could continue to have energy production in the United States. And here's why. We have some of the lowest emissions in the world for units of energy produced here. Why would you want to kill that industry? So this is what's happened during this administration. So to suggest that there were issues with that conversation, fascinating. Now, look, I don't have a crystal ball. As Mr. Huffman will tell you, I'm not even very smart, but this was January 27th of 2021, okay? Last year, January of last year, I could recognize what was gonna happen with energy prices. And I said then, as a result of the executive orders and the other actions that Biden administration was taking, we we're gonna have higher electricity bills, higher prices of the gas pump, lost revenue sharing for hurricane protection, flood control and coastal restoration in my home state of Louisiana, Alabama, Texas, Mississippi, and others, higher delivery costs for, for products being delivered all across the United States, more dependence on foreign energy from China, Russia, and other, Iran, and other countries, and net increase in global emissions as a result of getting energy from other countries and offshoring services. Got to tell you, that's bad in a thousand. That's better than I ever did in college. So, you know, I, I, I don't think that this stuff is really, is really rocket science here. Um, in fact, it's so much not rocket science, you can make a cartoon off of what's happening right now, as somebody apparently did. President Biden saying, we don't want to pollute the air with our, our fossil fuels. So then he's going to Saudi and saying, can we use yours? It's exactly what's happening right now. This is completely baffling to me that, uh, that that's what we see have going on, that that's what we have going on. Now, last thing is, is this right here. This is a letter from Senator Cantwell, Senator Menendez, Senator Markey, and Senator Schumer. Just read this one. The current run-up in world oil prices is effectively a tax on every American family's discretionary budget, except that the money goes to the OPEC cartel rather than the U.S. Treasury. Couldn't agree with them more. I want to highlight this word tax, because when you go back and you look at, you go back and you look at, um, at this one right here, that, that's a tax. The President of the United States said that no one making less than $400,000 was going to get a tax. Cantwell, Schumer, Menendez, and somebody else. Markey, thanks. And Markey said, uh, so that's a tax. That's a tax. Every American's paying it. It's pushing people into energy poverty. People have the false choice of deciding if they're going to open up, excuse me, if they're going to pay their electricity bill, fuel their car, or get groceries. This is unbelievable. And I'm going to say it again, it's resulting in higher emissions. Um, I, I want to ask, um, I, I believe um, you, uh, Dr. Uh, when you, when you um, carry out better farming practices, as you noted, I assume that that results in, in sequestered greenhouse gases, improved sequestration of greenhouse gases. Is that, is that accurate? Uh, or potentially? Sorry. <laughs> yes, sir. The hope rate right, is that by implementing sustainable practices, you are storing more carbon in the soil. You're improving the water infiltration rate, right? Like in the list of co-benefits goes on. It's also improved habitat potential for wildlife. Yes. 
Thank you. Um, I, I didn't mean to go off on a diatribe, and I just kind of ate all of my time. So I'm gonna, I'm, I know, I, 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 I didn't have much coffee today, but, um, but I'm, gonna, I'm gonna yield back. I'm gonna submit some questions for the record because I do have a number of them, but I do wanna note to my friend, Mr. Huffman, that your witness just said that sequestration's uh, an And option. we'll go yield to back. Mr. Huffman for five minutes. You're recognized. Well, thank you, Madam Chair. I wanna commend you for